So in this video we're going to discuss UCS native fiber channel zoning. Uh, my name is Sal Calora and I'm a principal engineer with Cisco and we're going to go through this uh, kind of step by step. Uh, might be one video, might be a series, but uh, by the end of this you'll, uh, you'll understand how to configure native fiber channel zoning on the UCS Fabric Interconnect. Uh, the benefit of this is you actually uh, obviate the need for a fiber channel switch upstream which lowers your cost and simplifies your connectivity. So a couple of things that are important here, uh, we're going to change the fabric interconnects to fiber channel switch mode uh, out of the box. They come as end host mode. Uh, we have to change the port types on the ports obviously to, to be fiber channel attached uh, storage uh, versus being an uplink port. Uh, we're going to enable zoning on the vSAN. So every any vSAN that you want to create in the system and assign to your HBAs um, has to have zoning enabled or else the zoning doesn't happen. Uh, you have to create storage connection policies. You have to create storage connection policies. Those define the targets that you're going to talk to. So that's kind of one end of the connection. Uh, the storage connection policy allows you to do the type of zoning, whether it's single initiator, single target, or single initiator, multi-target, etc. And then you have um, the SAN connectivity profile. So the connectivity profile determines what HBAs are created on your service profile. And then you go ahead and assign that connectivity profile um, inside the service profile and that connects everything together. Uh, one thing um, that's very important to understand here is that when you use uh, UCS to zone your SAN, um, you don't have to create the HBAs manually like you normally would uh, on your service profile, which is a big difference, and that's something to, uh, to really note. So when you go to create this, uh, you don't have to actually go into your service profile and create the VHBAs. The SAN connectivity profile does that for you. So uh, let's get started. Um, here's the, the, the flow, basically, of, of how things are set up. So the storage connectivity policies, um, I'm sorry, the storage connection policies, they point to the targets. Then you take the SAN connectivity policy, which is where you create your HBAs, and you assign them to a storage connection policy, and then you assign the SAN connectivity policy to a service profile. So uh, let's go ahead and, and see what that looks like. So let's start, um, let's start in, you know, go in order here. So the, the first thing is you can see here in my Fabric Interconnect, uh, I've gone ahead and you can see that the fiber channel mode is set to switch and you just click on this uh, this this menu item here obviously in my case I've done it already um, this is going to force a reboot of the fabric interconnect so just be be advised that that uh, is going to happen uh, in my case I'm using a 6248 um, in which case I used the uh, configured the uh, unified ports uh, so that the the bottom four or the rightmost four ports are fiber channel ports. You move this slider back and forth uh, to determine what ports uh, are going to be fiber channel ports. And again, uh, this requires a reboot of the fabric interconnect to, to do that from default. Uh, if you're using an older fabric interconnect with a fiber channel module, this is this step uh, really isn't necessary. Uh, then once the fiber channel ports are added, you have to determine what they're going to be. So they could be a fiber channel storage port or an uplink port. In my case, they're storage ports. Uh, port 30 in my setup is actually connected to uh, an old NetApp, a very old NetApp. As you can see, it's set up as 2 gigabit, but it works. So that's what we have in, in this particular lab setup. And in, in this lab setup also, I'm not using any uh, vSANs. I'm just using the default. I'm not setting up any special vSANs uh, for this particular lab. And I did the same thing on Fabric Interconnect B as well. Um, going here, you can see I've got the port up and it's, it's connected and, and it's set up and, and ready to go. So that's the physical layer. Once that's set up, um, then you go and create your storage connection policies. So on the SAN tab, you create your storage connection policy. And in this case, I did a single initiator, single target. And um, you click the little plus sign here and you put in the WWPN of the target adapter along the A path or the B path. And so you choose that when you, so if I were to go add here, you can see you can choose the A or B and the vSAN. Uh, in my case, it's default. So I created one for the fabric A side and one for the fabric B side. And those are the actual WWPNs that are on the array that I have. Um, and that's how you establish one side of the connection. On the 
SAN connectivity policies, I created one called Dual HBA that has basically here, if I go to the general tab, you can see this is very familiar. This should be very, very familiar uh, to you if you've created um, VHBAs on service profiles. So this is kind of a shortcut to doing that. So you, you choose the worldwide node name. Um, I have a pool uh, that I already have uh, assigned here. Um, and then uh, you create any number of HBAs that you want. If you want four, you create four. If you want two, you create two, etc. Uh, if I were to go in here and click modify, this screen again should be very familiar to you. This is the same screen that we use to create VHBAs inside of a service profile. In this case, I have my, my A side pool and my B side pool. I went ahead and set that, set the VSAN, etc. So all the same things. This should be very familiar to you if you've created HBAs before. Uh, obviously, I skipped the step of creating the pools. You see those right here. I mean, those are that kind of goes without saying that you need your your worldwide node name and port name pools. I like to use A and B side. I use the A zero and B zero here, uh, and I use generally use FF for the for the uh, for the WWNNs. Uh, as you can see here on the on the vSAN in question on the storage cloud. Now remember, this is important because storage the storage cloud is actually where the vSANs live. There's two different clouds. SAN cloud is used on the uplink side. Storage cloud is used when you have locally terminated ports. So if I go to the vSAN here, you can see that the fiber channel zoning is enabled. Uh, that's very, very important. Um, because if you don't change this, uh, none of the zoning is actually going to work. So it's really important that you change that. If I go back to here, um, where you have to connect um, the, the uh, initiator to the target is, is on these initiator groups. So if you click here, you can see you type in the name of the group, you select the adapter, and then you select the connectivity policy, whether it's or the connection policy, whether it's A or B. So in this case, I have FC0 connecting to the fabric A side and FC1 connecting to the fabric B side. And that basically connects the adapters that I'm going to create to these storage connection policies, which has the endpoint. So basically, any what this basically says is any time I, I use this SAN connectivity policy on a service profile, it will create an FC0 adapter and map it and zone it to that endpoint. And it'll take, it'll create adapter FC1 and zone it to this target endpoint. That's really it, that's really all that happens. And so the way that looks is if I go to a service profile here and I click on the actual service profile and I go to storage, there's now this SAN connectivity policy. If I click on that, you can see it's dual HBA. It created these HBAs for me and then it went ahead and as you can see, assign those initiator groups. And if I go to fiber channel zones, you can see I actually have zones set up between this initiator and this target and this initiator and this target. So that's, that's all you really need to do. Let's go over it one more time. Let's review. So once you have the physical connectivity set up and the ports are connected, right? The other thing, by the way, that you can do, which is really interesting, is you can you can see this on the actual Fabric Interconnect itself. Uh, so if I go and, and load a, a PuTTY session here directly into uh, my Fabric Interconnects, I'll show you this on the command line. So as you can see, if I go onto the Fabric Interconnect itself and I say connect NXOS, and I do a show Floggy database, you can see that I have the initiator logged into the fabric, and I also have the actual server. Uh, this is the target, I should say, and then here's the initiator. And you can see that it's the A side. So I'm on the A fabric interconnect, and I can see the A side. So from a troubleshooting perspective, it's very easy to link these things together. So you could say, okay, uh, if I go to my um, Fabric A policy here, and I pull up this. This adapter, this 8186A7AC53, should be right here, 8186A7AC53. So that's how I know that I have everything lined up correctly. So that my initiator on the A side talks to the target on the A side, and it's, see, it's seen on the A side of the fabric. And if I do a show zone, 
you can see that this zone right here, this one right here with A008F and A7AC53 is right here, A008F and A7AC53. So the zone is created dynamically by virtue of the fact that I, can, I configured this SAN connectivity policy called dual HBA that contains two HBAs where each individual HBA is assigned to a fiber channel target endpoint by virtue of the connection to the storage connection policy. Right? So it's one flows to the other. So if I were to go back to this diagram, you can see that the target is assigned to the connection policy which is assigned to an HBA in a connectivity policy which is then assigned to the service profile. It's actually very, very simple, very easy. Uh, once you understand the, the nomenclature involved. And what that what that means is I can go into my UCS here, I mean my vCenter here, and if I go to the host in question, and I go to, let's say, I go to summary, you can see that there's the test net app right there. So it can actually see the storage. Uh, if I go to configuration, and I go to storage and I click on test net app, you can see that it, it sees the, the LUN in question uh, and it sees the, the capacity, etc. If I go to devices and I, and I click on that, um, you can see if I go to manage paths that it sees the two HBAs and it even does multi-path I.O. So there's, there's one that's active with the I.O. and then the other one that's just sitting there waiting in case one fails. So in this case um, if you look at the uh, at the targets, uh, these are the actual targets, and then you have the two H. The the, the targets here are the um, 81 and 82. So you see 81 and 82; those are the targets on the net app. And then VMHBA 0 and 2. If I were to close this and go into storage adapters, you could see right here that it's A008F and B00FF. Those are my two. HBAs that I have in question. And then also if I click on an HBA, you can see that it sees the NetApp over that HBA. And if I click on paths, you can see the path in question there. And if I click on that, you can see the path in question there. Um, so you can see that the B side path is connected to B and the A side path is connected to A and all the traffic is flowing over the A side. And that's basically it. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll probably catch up with another video.